Hello subscribers and first time visitors. Welcome to Lloyd Old House. We have been working on our bed and let us not delay in completing it. Today we will be working on the pillows. So I use graph paper and I, you don't have to but I like using it because then I can just count the, the squares. Let me see how it looks right here and I think that this is fairly reasonable. So what I did is I cut my two templates and the templates, if you're doing it in inches, is one and three quarters of an inch by one inch. If you are doing it in centimeters, it's four and a half by two and a half. So to cut the fabric, I have to add one little square right here which will be my seam allowance. Another one right here. And then instead of cutting two pieces, I'm gonna do this one folding. So I will need to cut my one, two, three, four squares, plus another four, eight, and each one of the sides has to be, um, has to have a seam allowance. So this is what I ended up with. So um, this is going to be nine squares by 10 squares, or, two and a half inches by two and a quarter. So two and a half by two and a quarter. If you're doing it in centimeters, it's going to be five and three quarters by six and a quarter, okay? So what this will do is this, when I fold it, you will see that I will have one little square is going to be my seam allowance on this side, one square on this side, and then right here I will have one on each of the sides. So this is my piece of fabric that I will be using. You can also use a piece of an old t-shirt. The those That material is very soft, but I already have this right here, so right now I'm just cutting it so that it's a manageable piece. Okay, here you go, and now I have to go with my template. Okay, and I'm going to cut four of them because two pillows will come with the set of sheets and two pillows will come with the set with the bed spread. Now these are not pillowcases. These are just the pillows first. On the longer side, I am going to mark a little crease right here that will represent one of my little squares and just kind of press it with my fingers. When I take it over to the sewing machine, the fold is going to be on the outside, and then I will go and sew here and here, and I'll come right back. Okay, here I have my four foundations for the pillowcases. As you can see, I sew the fold, the fold to the outside. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit here on the corner. So when I do that, it'll make it easy for turning it inside out. Hmm, which is gonna be kind of tough because these are such little pillowcases. This is a chopstick and it's not too pointy. I don't want to pierce through the fabric or through the stitches. Okay, and you can see now, this is gonna help me when it's time to close it because it's already marked. This is gonna have to be sewn by hand. Okay, and with the help of this toothpick, 
gently just to make a, a corner so that the corner is not too round okay so this is my first one and I have three more to go my four pillows and for the filling we would like to use something that it feels just like a regular size pillow would I'm going to be using polyester royal silk maybe not maybe you just get a little piece of cotton or you get your supplements that sometimes oops I think this is going to be enough for all four of them okay so I don't want it to be overstuffed I want it to feel just like a regular size pillow would. In the past, I think that I have overstuffed them and then it takes away from the reality look that we're going for. And I want it to go all the way into the corners so that it's evenly distributed. And just a little bit more. Okay, let's see. what feels right and I think this is fine it's not too puffy okay and then I will go ahead and start closing the top to close the top single thread and I don't want to create a lip right here so what I'm going to do is sort of like a figure eight stitch which means that I will be entering from inside of each one of the sides. So I'm going to be going this way and this way, just like a figure eight. I don't, I think that this stitch has a name, but I don't know what the name of it is. So you unite the two fabrics without creating a lip. doesn't require a lot of skill so these are the last couple of stitches to close it to hide it, to hide my last piece of thread, going back in here. And trim. Okay, so I have now my four little pillows, okay? They look very comfortable, they're not overstuffed. And now let's move on to the pillowcases. We come back to the template that we made for the actual pillows. But the pillowcase has to be slightly bigger. What I did is that I took the template and I just went half of my square around it bigger, except for the opening, which I added an entire, an entire whole square. Okay, so the measurements would be in inches is two and three quarters by two and five eighths. In centimeters is seven by 6.7. And now, now we gotta go ahead and cut the fabric. Here I have my two pillowcases. So this is the hemming that I did. It's single fold. I didn't do two folds because it would get too bulky. This will then be sewn on this side, on this side, and then we turn it inside out. And it looked like it was really big when we started. 
in, in relation to the pillows. But now, w once we do all of the seams, it will be just, just right. Okay, they are sewn now, so let's trim the corners to be able to make a turn. My seams were about a quarter of an inch. And the stick that I'm using is not too pointed again, so as not to perforate. And then it's time to dress our pillows. Not as easy as the big pillows. And I just have enough extra right here so that it's not showing. So this is ready to go onto the bed. Okay, so this is one. I have another one. For the decorative pillowcases, I am going to use the same um, thread that I use for the bedspread and I would also like to stay with the theme of the, the faux granny squares except I'm not going to do the popcorn because if you go to sleep with that little ball on your head it wouldn't be very comfortable. So to start be generous in the beginning and leave plenty because when it's time to tack in the ends you want to be able to use your needle. So to start, I simply twist the yarn around my uh, crochet hook, which is 1.3 millimeters or number 10. Yarn over. My first chain, this one does not count. So from here, start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yarn over, insert your hook not on the first chain, but on the second one, okay? And here we will make our first half double crochet. One, two, let me put my yarn on this other side. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. One and two turn. 
yarn over half double crochet right here right very close to your end okay so you made one half double crochet and these three and these two chains count as one so now you have one two three four five so you have one cluster of five half double crochets chain one skip the next chain the next stitch and then right on the following one you will start another cluster of five skip one and another cluster of five so you will have three clusters of fives and i'll come back when it's ready to when it's time to turn so this is my last half double crochet i'm approaching the end of this row so as you can see i have one two and three clusters of five double crochets each one of them and those clusters are going to mimic the squares to turn chain two and continue with exactly the same thing clusters of five double crochets so we have one two three four five chain one skip the next stitch skip this one and then immediately on the next one one two three four five chain one and skip and do another cluster three chains turn around instead of going in your next stitch you skip and go on to the next one and you uh, chain one and skip every other chain okay so chain one skip going to the next one until the end of the row and then we're going to repeat the clusters of five okay so here's my little square my little rectangle i have my panels of five panels of five divided by the row with windows and this is going to be my last row my last row is going to be exactly like the very first one which is just a row of half double crochets all the way across one two okay okay i'm going to come back when i'm ready to close it okay this is the end of my one side of my pillow case to end it i'm gonna give it enough yarn or thread and so here i'm gonna do my closing chain which is i'm just gonna pull it all the way all the way through and tighten a little bit now if you see this and if you see this it looks like this is much much bigger than this but by the time you put it over and join it with the other side it just fits perfectly so for one pillow I have to make two of these since I have two pillows I have to make four okay to join them together okay so this is my one side and my my second side of the uh, pillowcase this side I'm not gonna need the um, long thread 
so I'm just going to trim them like so and this side I am also not going to use this is the only one and perhaps I left a little too much okay so remove that now I have to thread my yarn through a needle and I'm gonna try to use this needle that is not specifically for yarn or embroidery thread so I have my assistant here my threader and let's see if it goes through oh it did good okay so <clears throat> So this is how I started and if you and if you and if you put them together let's see right here if I put the two together you see the precision and how each one of the the V's that the chains create it's going to correspond to the one on the opposite side and so that way I can start I'm going to put it through the two loops and start going all the way around. But you don't need me to you don't need to watch me do every single stitch, right? So I'm going to put them together and when I'm getting ready to get to the end to close it oops I have to get rid of these pieces of thread that keep getting in the way and so on Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I have sewn together two of the four sides. See, I have kind of like a, this could be a little hat for a bigger though. <laughs> and at this point, I'm going to take my pillow and put it inside so that I don't have to struggle and wiggling it in. I'm going to sew it with the pillow already inside, okay? And continue doing the exact same thing. As I did on the first two sides. Okay, now that I'm getting to the corner, it's time to hide my excess thread. I'm just going to tuck it inside. and continue sewing so this is the end I should have put this one inside. <laughs> this is the, these are the last couple of stitches to finish the pillow. This is my last stitch and right here I'm going to insert in my loop and one more time 
And now I'm coming inside just to hide the thread. And now we have our decorative pillar. Ooh, pillowy enough. Let's see what it looks like on the bed. Okay, so we have the pillows with the pillowcases that match the sheets of the bed. These ones may very well go under the bedspread, up to you. And then these are the ones that are just for the core, let's see, oh, so that they look exactly the same. Here you go. The bed keeps getting better and better and we've been spending time with the linens. Now we're going to move on to more furniture for next episode. Stay with us. Thank you so much for watching Lloyd Dollhouse.